Spare. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. The next section of Spare continues with Harry's recollections from Balmoral. Once again, the ghostwriter teases out the information from Harry, and I doubt that the ghostwriter has actually been to Balmoral. I don't think that would ever have happened. And therefore, he's done a good job, actually, of getting Harry to recall what it looks like. Of course, there may be some pictures that have been looked at also, which have aided the description. But once again, uh, Moringer does a good job in terms of creating the image. You can very much see it in your mind's eye as uh, Harry describes what his bedroom is like and the, the sitting room is like, talking about the hearth and so forth. And he explains that everything at Balmoral was old or made to look that way. And he talks about the bathroom and explains that the water even seems old, not in a bad way, but old like the lake where Merlin helped Arthur find his magic sword. And the water was brownish, suggestive of weak tea, which often alarmed weekend guests. And um, it would be the case that some of the guests would go, oh, I think there's something wrong with the water. And uh, Prince Charles, as he then was, would point out, that's okay. It's uh, affected basically by the Scottish peat. And it's um, there's nothing wrong with it whatsoever. Uh, Harry then recalls sitting in a scalding hot bath, looking out of the uh, window through a slit. And again, it's um, quite an imaginative and evocative image that's created where he recalls adventures cycling on the lawn and uh, a cousin crashing into a lamppost, etc. And then he returns to August the 30th, 1997, and explains that um, they had their baths, jumped into their gym jams, and then had food brought to them by the footmen, and although he says you have footmen bringing you the food and it sounds posh, the food that they ate was just kiddie stuff. Fish fingers, cottage pies, roast chicken. Interesting, the roast chicken gets in that, a mention earlier there, and green peas. He talks about their nanny and also about how that they could hear their father padding past and that he was like clockwork uh, in terms of the time that he would be off to take a bath and a soak and uh, listen to an audiobook on a CD. And then they would hear the adults going downstairs and the bagpipes playing. And interestingly, he writes, for the next two hours, the adults would be held captive in the dinner dungeon, forced to sit around that long table, forced to squint at each other in the dim gloom of a candelabra designed by Prince Albert, forced to remain ramrod straight before china plates and crystal goblets, placed with mathematical precision by staff who used tape measures, forced to peck at quail's eggs, forced to make idle chit-chat while stuffed into their fanciest kit. Black tie, hard black shoes, trues, maybe even kills. And Harry thinks, gosh, pain in the arse, basically. Well, he doesn't quite use that phrase about being an adult. And... He talks about the fact that Charles is always sniffing things. A touch of the Joe Biden here. Not suggesting that Charles goes around sniffing young children. But Harry recalls that he was always sniffing things. And compares him to being a bloodhound. And he queries, possibly, that his father engaged in a lot of sniffing. Because it was difficult for him to smell anything over his personal scent. Au sauvage. And apparently he'd really slap it on, slathering it on. And uh, the smell of his father reminded him of the fact that his fragrance was made in Paris. And then that remember, causes him to remember his mother. He t says that they were basically watching TV and messing around. And then they bumped into the piper and that the piper allowed them to have a go on the bagpipes, but they didn't get anywhere with it. 
and he talks about what his bed's like and then interestingly he talks about getting into bed and writes i pulled the sheets and covers to my chin because i didn't like the dark no not true i loathe the dark mummy did too she told me so i'd inherited this from her i thought along with her nose her blue eyes her love of people her hatred of smugness and fakery and all things posh i could see myself under those covers staring into the dark listening to the clicky insects and hooty owls. Did I imagine shapes sliding along the walls? Did I stare at the bar of light along the floor, which was always there because I always insisted on the door being left open a crack? How much time elapsed before I dropped off? In other words, how much of my childhood remained and how much did I cherish it, savour it, before groggily becoming aware of? It's interesting, again, these recollections that Harry has because although he's always been painted as this uh, fun-loving playboy prince, there does appear to be a sensitivity to him, a fragility even, which is in accordance with the empathic traits that he has, his fear of the dark, the fact that he uh, is apprehensive about things as an adult, and so not quite the cocky firebrand that many people perceive him to be. And that these disclosures, again, are testament to the skill of the ghostwriter. It is interesting reading it uh, as he recalls what they would do in Balmoral, the way that the uh, place looked, the little anecdotes that are woven in again. It's very well done, I have to say. And it is very clear the influence of the ghostwriter here because you wouldn't see anything as evocative or descriptive, I should imagine, coming from Harry. Although it does appear that he has something of an imagination because of the things that he talks about when he's having a soak in the bath and the things that he remembers, the ghostwriter has certainly pulled these things from him and created a picture but also a living picture, so that you can see the place that Harry is talking about, but you can also picture the people moving around in it, him and William bouncing on the beds, him and William riding bikes on the lawn, uh, the sound of his father going past in the corridor off for his bath. You can picture all of those things happening, and it's quite um, a useful image that's created. It also demonstrates that Balmoral was clearly a place for Harry that he very much enjoyed being at. But of course, we also know that the stage is being set for what comes next, by reference, of course, to the date that's been mentioned, and that it's the contrast that's being created, a literary device, almost building things up. This is a safe place. I love being here. I have fond memories of it. And then, oh dear, we know what's just around the corner. And indeed, join me in the next video to find out more detail of that which is around the corner.